What's up everybody, Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today I'm going to be showing off the finals match between myself and Sina Gazi Askar in the 2017 North American International Championships Retro Format Tournament hosted by Pokestats. This is going to be a Zorark Break Mirror, a really exciting match between Sina and myself. I was 5-0 in the event leading up until top 8, beat two Garbodor decks back to back in top 8 and top 4 to make my way to the finals of this retro format tournament. Huge shout out to Pokestats for hosting a great event. Really excited about that. If you want to join their Discord, it'll be linked in the description below. Also, make sure to check out my Twitch stream twitch.tv slash tricky gym where i stream live pokemon trading card game content every single weekday let's get on with the gameplay and see who comes out on top in this 2017 retro format tournament cena is playing first in this best of three series opens his drampa gx to my oranguru this is going to be a really tight back and forth series since both of us are relying on mind jack in order to deal the majority of our damage it means that both of us are going to be really aware of how many bench pokemon we put onto our own bench it's this awkward back and forth you can either bench a lot of zeruas set up as many zorks as you can but then you boost your opponent's damage output even further or you can really pare down how many bench pokemon you have but if you do that then you run the risk of your opponent just overwhelming your board position with a quick Drampa GX or something like that. So it's this very tight matchup, and Cena's list is relatively favored in this mirror match as well, since Cena is running an Umbreon GX. Now, Umbreon GX can be instantly evolved from Eevee using the Energy Evolution ability, much like Espeon GX is played in the Garbodor decks. Now, Umbreon, I wasn't super into the idea of playing Umbreon for this tournament, but it ends up playing out pretty well in this finals match. Umbreon has the Shadow Bullet attack for a Darkness and two Colorless Energy, does 90 damage and 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So that snipe damage can really add up since... Uh, you're going to be placing damage counters on Pokemon like Zorark and placing that 30 damage counters onto a bench Zorark can make it capable of being knocked out by a Mind Jack that would have missed a KO otherwise. So I do like it for that. Now, I'm in a super weird position with my Drampa GX here. I can't really afford to come into the active position either and either Big Wheel GX or Righteous Edge since I happen to draw into the one Rainbow Energy that I have in my deck so it's a special energy can be removed by the opposing drampa's righteous edge attack which would be very bad for me we see cena is setting up quickly here he's got a double colorless onto his ev he knows that he's going to want to go in and evolve into umbreon gx the following turn he uses hex maniac a big wheel gx is here and he just catches me off guard i was planning on using the ultra ball to thin my deck down and use instruct the following turn and he really catches me slipping here puts me in an extremely compromising situation since i cannot disrupt his hand at all i just have lysander a weird rogue lysander i have to play i can't ultra ball for a tapu lele to get out of it and this is a very awkward hand to be in cena happened to make a perfect call here with the hex maniac and uh, just predicting that my hand wasn't going to have an actual versus seeker or draw supporter in it uh, i have to bring up the ev and i'm considering just using righteous edge on the ev it does put me in a compromising situation though if he does have floatstone choice band double colorless you know takes the damaged ev puts it onto the bench and then i have powered up his berserk attack for a potential one hit ko but i do think it's probably a risk that i may end up just having to take because i don't really have any other good plays here alternatively i could ultra ball and since i lysandered up the ev i could uh, maybe ultra ball and go for a big wheel gx this is my other consideration i probably uh, will go for the big wheel gx here just because i do need to set up my board position and i need to have some sort of play to be able to make so we'll see if i go righteous edge, i actually am just going for the righteous edge so that's like a fair play if i go for big wheel gx i just invite cena to come and just attack my drampa and do whatever he wants uh but here with the righteous edge at least i help to get myself you know somewhat in the chase for the energy race here and i think cena 
realizes that he is going to be outpacing me here and is just going to bench uh, more Pokemon, which he is fine with. He's got the Choice Bean, he's got the Double Colors, he's got the Floatstone. So this is the play that I was worried about with the Berserk. I had to do something, though, and I didn't have uh, any sort of great routes. And he's just going to Hex me again. He's got the Verse Seeker Hex Maniac. He's caught me with just one card in hand, being the Zork. So Cena really taking advantage of this Hex Mani Maniac momentum here. Uh, it's been absolutely horrible for this small hand that I had, but I do top deck the first of Seeker, so I am, I am able to play out of this, thankfully, but I would rather have instructed, got to see some more cards, but we are saved here by the top deck research, and I don't find a double colorless energy, so I'm not even going to be able to respond to this Drampa very well. I have a darkness energy. I could go up and confuse the Drampa, which actually seems like the most reasonable thing to do. We're just going to use the Moonlight Madness. And since the Drampa already has a Choice Band on it, unless Cena has an actual switch in his deck, which I don't believe he does, then uh, he's not going to be able to attack with the Drampa again. However, he can't just attack a Double Colorless Energy to one of these Bench Zoraks, stand in, and take a knockout that way. Now, Cena does play Reverse Valley in his deck, which is going to increase the damage output of his Dark-type Pokemon as well by just 10 damage, which can be useful as well for helping Zoraks to hit uh, correct numbers with their mind jack attack and also with foul play and Cena does find the double colorless energy he's going to knock out my Zerua going in with the Zork and at this point Cena has sustained almost no damage to his board hasn't really had to weather you know too much at all I've got teammates in my hand fortunately but just a single Zork my prospect of winning this game is looking pretty bad, especially since I don't have the advantage of energy attachment. Cena has three energy attached to my zero right now. Cena has two Zorks to my one. I can, you know, go up with maybe a Zorok break and copy Mind Jack. I mean, I can Mind Jack for knockout, but it just doesn't feel very good right now because I know that Cena's just going to be able to bring up Drampa and return the knockout, and I'm not going to be able to skip ahead on energy attachments to be able to knock out that Drampa GX. Now, the best way for me to knock out the Drampa GX is gonna be with my own Zorark Break, but I would have to get a damaged Pokemon onto the bench as well. So I would have to set up more Zorks, but as you've seen, my opening hands have not been super conducive to setting up many Zorks. It has been a really troubling start here for myself. So it looks like I'm opting to get my own Drampa started with the Darkness Energy. I'm going to end Cena to three. I like this play. I've got my own Instruct. If I want to, I could draw more cards. And potentially, I'm just going to try and swing that momentum back. And I like that I'm not giving up the Zorak Break. The Zorak Break is my one out to be able to knock out Cena's Drampa very easily. And if I can maybe knock this energy off of the Zorak and catch Xena without a switch card or a float stone or something like that in this three card hand, then I can bring the momentum of this match back into my favor. So I really like this play here, opting to go with the Righteous Edge, going for more of a strategical maneuver than just going for the knockout. Obviously, if I just take that knockout with Zorak Break, then Cena brings up his Drampa, knocks out my only attacker, and I pretty much just lose the game from there. Now, Cena does find the Verse Seeker and the Research here, which is going to be great for him. If he just finds a float stone, then he takes the automatic knockout on my Drampa GX. And there's the Umbreon GX that I was talking about. Cena doesn't mind evolving that up, just giving him another attacker. And at this point, he can bench as many bench Pokemon as he wants. And Cena does not actually find the float stone or an energy to retreat. So we did buy ourselves a turn, which is very valuable. Now, if I had a choice ban in my hand, uh, I could potentially um attach it to maybe my zork or my drampa i can't berserk for knockout i was thinking maybe i could berserk for knockout on this opposing drampa with a lysander but i can't since i don't have any actual damage counters on my bench at this point and uh, that's you know 20 damage i ended up doing to the umbreon there coming back to bite me as cena has been able to utilize his berserk so far now i do have uh, the option to be able to stand in with my Zorak Break. And now that my Drampa has a Darkness Energy on it, we are actually tied as far as our energy drops go. So it's looking like I am just going to bring up the Drampa GX and use Righteous Edge, trying to run Cena out of energy at this point and take uh, the advantage as far as energy drops go. So if I were able to catch Cena off guard here, right, without the energy, without the ability to attack, uh, but now he's just digging for his Zorak Break and he can 
just evolve into Zork, break stand in, and take the Berserk knockout on my Drampa utilizing a Zork break. And you can see uh, the advantage Cena has of playing three Zork break uh, over me playing two means that he's going to have an easier time finding those Zork breaks and getting them into play. So with a field full of Zorak break at this point, my energy advantage almost doesn't even really matter. He's just going to be able to foul play Berserk, copy that for knockout. Now I am in a position where I cannot easily return the knockout on this Zorak, and Cena is just an energy drop away from being able to Berserk anything in my deck for a knockout. So Cena taking a quick win here, really capitalizing on that momentum that he bought himself with those Hex Maniac turns, and I just could not recover from those early Hex Maniacs. Cena just kind of sprinted ahead, got this board position set up, didn't end up using the Umbreon, really. Just getting the quick Trampa, quick Zorak breaks was enough to set him ahead in this match. Now, I'm kind of looking for some sort of answer. I could potentially end Cena to one, but at this point, it is six to one. I do not have any prizes that I've taken yet, and I have not even dealt substantial damage to Cena's board. So I don't really have much of an out here. I'm just kind of scrambling, looking for something I can maybe uh, jockey for position with a couple of mind jacks here. I'm doing three, six, nine, 12, you know, 130 damage, 10 damage shorts of a knockout on the Zorak break, which feels really bad. And then I don't really have a great route from here. But if Cena can maybe just produce a way to switch and a double colorless he's got a way to win the game but i did end him to one so i'm going to be limiting his resources he has already used his big wheel gx so there is a theoretical way in which i am able to capitalize and win this game though it is going to be very much a struggle i think i am going to have to ultra ball here and get myself uh, another attacker though i think maybe both my trampas are in the discard pile so that feels pretty bad i do have a rescue stretcher left though so I'm thinking about special charging, putting some special energy back into the deck, and then I have to retreat. I mean, Cena only has got one prize remaining. So I have to retreat and attack with this Zorak, and I can take a knockout on his Zorak break, but I have to hope that Cena basically draws nothing for the remainder of the game, which is a lot to ask at this point. But you can see how N is a very powerful comeback card. If I were able to... Uh, catch Cena without energy for multiple turns here, I could potentially get myself in a pretty nice situation. I uh, opt to attach the energy to the Oranguru. Oranguru can use Psychic. It's a valid attack for sure. And I do have Oracorio. Not going to be doing too much right now. I do find Rescue Stretcher and an energy. So in hindsight, maybe I just go for the Rescue Stretcher there. And I could have attached an energy to my Drampa which would have been really good. I'm going to stand in and just use Mind Jack for the knockout, clean this up, and then hopefully Cena does not have an energy to be able to uh, really aggress or take a return knockout. But at this point, if he just uses Lysander, he could bring up my other Zorak, and if he just has a single dark energy, he will be able to copy my Mind Jack and take a knockout on my bench Zorak. DCE will also just end the game, so Cena finds that double colorless energy, can berserk for 150 damage, knocking out my clean Zorak break. We're going to lose round one of this best of three series. Moving on to game two, I'm really excited about this opening hand, and I know that I'm going to have to be aggressive in setting up my Zorks. Obviously, Cena was able to win that last game by getting some Zorak breaks into play very quickly, getting energy onto his Drampa very quickly, and this opening hand is strong for me. I've got a Bridget. I can get myself the Zerua's out of my deck, and I'm considering how many Zerua I will actually want to put onto my bench. Uh, am I going to just go full aggressive here and bench three Zerua's and say, okay, you know, you're going to be able to capitalize and take some quick knockouts using Mind Jack. Instead, I decide to just go for two Zerua's. I'm going to be conservative here. And uh, my experience in the mirror is that being conservative pays off in the end. We saw Cena was not afraid at a certain point in the last game to really just start benching his Pokemon and say, I'm going to overwhelm you with attacks and damage output and so on and so forth. Cena going for the early Bridget as well and just going for three Zerua. And we see Cena is going for an opposite strategy here. Cena is going for an all-out uh, aggressive, I'm going to get as many Zorak breaks into play as I possibly can, where I am set on limiting Cena's damage output. Now, Cena plays Umbreon, so that's probably why he's so confident 
in setting up all of these Zeruas because he says, okay, even if you pair your, your bench down, I'm gonna go in with Umbreon GX who cannot be KO'd by Berserk. And I am, uh, you know, I'm gonna start softening up your Zorix on the bench so that even if you limit the amount of damage that I could do with my Mind Jack, I will still be able to clean up those KOs anyway since I open with Umbreon and uh, start using Shadow Bullet for 90 damage and 30 damage tonight. Now I'm really considering what to get off of this Ultra Ball. There's not really a lot of great ideas for me. I've already evolved up into both my Zorix and I've kind of committed to only having two Zorix on my bench. So I don't necessarily want to bench anything else because I am going for limiting my bench, making it so that Cena has a hard time getting, uh, you know, getting that damage that he needs. Now I do decide to bite on the third Zeru here and I'm just going to use Research, digging for an energy, and sure enough, I whiff, which is really a pain here. If I could just find a double colorless energy, I'd be able to stand in and take the first knockout, which would be a great thing for the momentum in this match. It would really help me to uh, keep that momentum going in my favor. Instead, I think I'm just going to go for the big wheel GX. And I play down all of my, you know, my tool cards, and I'm just going to big wheel GX and shuffle draw 10. So huge whiff there. I would have loved to have taken that knockout on the Zerua and gotten things kicked off strong. Instead, I'm giving Cena an opportunity to potentially uh, evolve up all these Zeruas into Zorks and get a pretty explosive turn to himself. Now, even off of that shuffle draw of 10, I still miss the double colorless energy, which is uh, making me wonder how many DZE did I prize or are they just a little bit harder to come by this game? Cena going for the energy evolution finds Zumbreon GX. And we're gonna get to see that Umbreon GX in action finds the floatstone is gonna stand in and retreat into Umbreon. It's got a shadow bullet to start damaging my bench Pokemon. Now, since I have Drampa in the active, I am you know, pretty confident just using Righteous Edge here. And I also have a third Zorix. So I would like to start evolving these Zorix into Zorix Break. I'm very happy with my board position right now. And I think I'm gonna try and catch Cena slipping without the double colorless energy. I do have Hex Maniac in my hand and my hand is very good. I like my hand, it's big. I have a lot of options, I have a lot of supporters, right? So this could be a turn where maybe I just attach a rainbow energy to one of my benched Zoroarks, and then I evolve into Zorark Break and use Righteous Edge to put that Umbreon into potential KO range for one of my bench Pokemon. Now, it looks like I am considering which Zorark to evolve into Zorark Break here, and I decide to just leave the Zorark there, and I like the Hex Maniac play. I think I'm not going to go in with my own Zorark. I'm just going to Righteous Edge and try to take the lead as far as the energy counts go and set that Umbreon GX up for a potential stand-in knockout next turn. And my thought process is by using the Hex Maniac, I make it so that Cena will not be able to use his own Zorark stand-in, leaving the Umbreon in the active for me so that I can take a knockout on it and take my two prizes. So that would be very good. Now, if Cena does have the other DCE in his hand, which he has, and a Sycamore, so he's going to be able to take that knockout with Shadow Bullet. And that is a very aggressive start here from Cena, and he's evolving up his Zoroarks in the background. And this is a ton of pressure, even though I've really limited my bench. And that is kind of the key to this mirror match in a lot of ways. Cena is trying to overcompensate for the fact that I've lowered, you know, lowered my bench size by sniping all of my bench Pokemon with Shadow Bullet and just going on the full-on aggressive with that Umbreon GX. Now my energy whiffs in the first couple turns, uh, that was really, really crucial. And again, we have let Cena get the advantage as far as the energy goes, even though I had the advantage of starting first just because I could not find my energy there. So I'm gonna try to recuperate that energy lead as the match proceeds here. Now I do have a good board state. I've got two Zorks and a Zorark break. This is very solid. I've got a handful of supporters and I've got the energy that I need to bring this Zorark into the active position. However, uh, copying one of the Umbreon GX's attacks is not going to be very good for me. Shadow Bullet only does 90 damage. 120 plus 50 is only 170, so it's not going to be enough 
for a KO. However, what, three, six, nine, 12, yes. If I can find the double colorless, we can take the knockout with Mind Jack. So I may just use this damaged Zorark here on my side of the field, which it looks like I am kind of offering that up. If I could get this damaged Zorark out of the way, then potentially I can uh, sweep and have the advantage as far as damage output goes because Cena has more Pokemon on his bench than I do. So I'm kind of offering up this damaged Zorark. Like, go ahead, take a knockout on my Zorark. I know it's only got 70 HP left. Your Mind Jack uh, can easily take a knockout on this Zorark, but then I'm going to limit myself to just one other benched Pokemon. So that is the board state that I was trying to set up here. Meanwhile, Cena has got three benched Pokemon and I'm gonna be dealing base 100 while Cena is only gonna be dealing base 40 damage once he takes out this Zorark in the active. So you could see how these Zorark mirror matches get really grindy and really weird down the line. And I kind of foresaw this board state coming. We are at four to three prizes, very close. And Cena's damage output is extremely small and he's got no way to really uh, to boost that now that uh, I only have so many Pokemon in play. So I need to figure out, how do I win this game? Take four prizes. I'm only dealing base 100 damage. And for every knockout that I take, I'm gonna be dealing less damage because I make it so that Cena has less benched Pokemon. It's a really tough mirror match. I mean, the Umbreon GX was extremely hard to play around. So I really am kind of grinding my gears here, trying to figure out what my win condition is. And there is one. Uh, there is a win condition. I could certainly figure this out. I'm looking at teammates here, uh, thinking that teammates is going to be great. Eventually, I can end Cena to a low hand size. But I'm thinking that uh, I want to teammates maybe set myself up another Zork. And I think that that's probably fine. I know that I am going to need another one eventually. I know that even if I put down another Zorua this turn, I make it so that Cena is still not taking one hit KOs on my Zorak. So I'm still at the advantage as far as damage output goes. So I'm looking at potentially just grabbing Zorua and Zorak off of the teammates. And I think that's fine here. I can attach the double colorless maybe to the active and just mind jack for 100. And I put this Zorark break down to just 40 HP remaining. Cena having more Zorark breaks in his deck is going to be a huge advantage. I have prized one of my Zorark breaks here. So I only have one Zorark break. And Cena already has two in play. So that's a huge advantage for Cena in this matchup right now. Just that he has more Zorark breaks in his deck available to him than I do. And as we can see, he's got all four Zorark in play right now, which is a huge flex on my board position. Four Zorark doesn't, didn't have a single one prize. None of them are prized, just all four on the board. None of them knocked out. It's, uh, it really is pretty, pretty tight here as far as this matchup goes. And my, uh, the tightrope that I have to walk in order to be able to win from this current board state is uh, is pretty, pretty gnarly. So I do have the Professor Kakui here, and that's good. And he leaves the damage Zorak break active instead of deciding to retreat into his bench one. And that's because he's offering up this Zorak break. He wants me to knock it out because if I take a knockout on this Zorak break, it means that I'm going to be dealing less damage to him in return. So that's kind of an interesting situation that we've got ourselves in here. Now, Tapu Lele GX is kind of valid in the mirror. It ignores resistance with its energy drive attack, which is pretty good. And if there is a double colorless energy on a Zorak, you can actually deal a fair amount of damage to Zorark breaks with Tapu Lele. So it's something that I'm going to keep in mind. Now we end ourselves to a pretty abysmal four cards here. We've got three Professor Sycamore and a Tapu Lele, which is fine. But hopefully we did some damage to Cena's hand as well. And I do have Mind Jack on this Zorark if I want it. Or I could retreat into my Zorark break and foul play mind jack for knockout and preserve this zorak with a dc and it looks like i'm going to opt to do that which is fine because i know that cena can not knock out this zorak break it's got 100 hp remaining even with the you know 40 snipe on it i was really hoping to pull that zorak break out of my prizes we didn't find it it's fine uh the darkness energy is not doing a whole lot for me right now since i prized my other zorak break and I did make sure that I left plenty of rescue stretchers available to me in my deck so that once the Zorak break does go down, I'll be able to rescue stretcher and bring the Zorak break back into play. That was something that I really liked about this list that I'm piloting. The two rescue stretchers gives you a lot of flexibility with which cards you want to bring back. 
Now, I'm only dealing base 70. He's dealing base 70 back to me. So we're kind of just, you know, punching each other back and forth. 70 damage here, 70 damage there. Both tied at three prizes now as well. And we can see that this is a really tight game. Three to three prizes. We're only halfway through this match. And look how many turns we've taken, which is something that I really love about this format is that I feel like it's really skill intensive. You have plenty of turns to be able to, to uh, to just respond to what your opponent's doing. There's so many different micro decisions to make. Now I Sycamore there intentionally discarding the darkness energies and I find myself another double colorless energy. If I want to, I can stand in and mind jack with my clean Zork. That is an option available to me. Or I can mind jack with the active, give a prize to Cena and then limit the amount of damage that he's doing in return and potentially mind jack with my Zork, break a clean Zork, break the following turn. So that is kind of the the routes that I'm considering here. Do I sacrifice this damaged Zork break and make it so that Cena is going to be dealing less damage on the following turn? Or do I go in with a clean one who I know that Cena will then be able to do 70 damage to me the following turn? We're both kind of stuck in this weird position where we're just dealing, you know, less than 100 damage, two hit KOing these Zorak breaks. But if I can transform that into something where there's less than a two hit KO, you know, a three hit KO on a Zorak break, that's going to be how I skip ahead. Can I force Cena into a compromising situation? Now, it looks like I'm going to use one of these rescue stretchers potentially on a Zorak, because at this position here, Cena does not have any damage Pokemon, though I'm probably about to inflict, inflict some damage on this Zorak break here. Um, but... Uh, it's, a, it's weird, you know, do I want to start setting up a Drampa? Do I want to sacrifice this Zorak and then start setting up a Drampa? I'm not exactly sure what uh, the correct route is here. You know, I'm thinking about potentially sacrificing this active Zorak break and attaching the DCE and then trying to maybe attach an energy to Drampa the following turn. At this point, I decide that I'm, I'm cool enough on energy attachments that I can spare the double colorless in my hand and just mind jack. Cena's going to go to two prizes remaining. I'm going to go up with Zorak. Uh, and go to two prizes remaining. Cena will take that knockout and probably go to one prize remaining. Then I figure I'm going to have to lead with that Drampa GX at the end of the game. Once it is, uh, you know, once Cena only has one prize remaining, I want to go up with the biggest Pokemon that I can go up with. So that's kind of what my thought process is there. And I was considering putting the Drampa down. I'm glad I didn't put the Drampa down. I think that that could have potentially led to some pretty disastrous things. But I think that I'll, I will want the Drampa down this next turn. Ideally, I would like to do that. Now, it looks like Cena is actually just going to Mind Jack with a clean Zorak, leaving the damaged Zorak break on his bench, leaving me with just a board with two Zorks. I do have a DCE, but I cannot take a knockout. So very weird situation for me to be in. And it certainly is crunch time. I find a Versus Seeker, so I could potentially go into the discard pile and use teammates if it's there. Let's take a look, Andrew. Yes, it is there. I could teammates or I could end all four Sycamores are in the discard pile. So if I want a Sycamore for the rest of the game, it's got to be from a Versus Seeker. And I think teammates would be good because I could just grab myself the Drampa, put the Darkness Energy onto it, maybe Mind Jack here. But Mind Jacking with a Damage Zorak for not a knockout feels really bad. So I actually kind of like this play. Lysandering up the Zorak break and taking a knockout going to two prizes, but that also feels really bad because I am not getting a meaningful energy drop onto something. But I figure if I don't take this knockout on the Zorak break this turn, then it means that I will not be able to KO it in any future turns because I'll be locked into only dealing 40 damage if I eventually knock out this active Zorak break. So you could see the crunch here. It's such a tough decision. How do I proceed? Do I bring up the Zorak break? Do I take a knockout on that? Uh, that is wasting, you know, kind of an energy drop. I don't get a meaningful energy drop. I could put the darkness energy onto the Zorak. I'm eyeing up Cena's resources. You know, how many of each card does he have remaining? How many Versus Seekers? How many, uh, you know, is his recovery gone? Uh, or do I go in and uh, and just set up a Drampa? I'm considering with the Versus Seeker. And I think I am going to probably go for teammates, right? Yes, teammates here and potentially get myself that Drampa. I think I've decided that maybe Lysandering that Zorak break is not the play for me. 
and that I absolutely need to set up something else if I want to have any chance of winning this game. So it looks like I'm going Drampa GX and Rescue Stretcher. I actually really like this play. I think this is very good. Uh, and I can get the Drampa GX. I can get Rescue Stretcher and go find myself a Zorark Break as well. And then I can go in with a Zorark Break. And that Zorark Break, 140 HP is going to be able to stand in. And I could put the Darkness Energy onto the Zorark Break stand in. And uh, then Mind Jack. So then I put Cena in a really weird spot. Because now he has got to deal uh, potentially a 3 hit KO to this Zorark Break. And this was the board state I've been talking about the whole game. I want to force Cena. The way I'm going to come back in this match is if I force Cena to 3 hit KO... A Zorark break and this is my opportunity to do that he's got a very small hand I've got N in my hand just in case uh, and sure enough I didn't bench the Drampa but you know uh, we're getting played out of the Drampa again which is kind of a feel bad but that's fine uh, you know the Drampa eventually will go down I would like to get an energy onto it now I could take a knockout here I know that Cena cannot take a knockout on my Zorark break the following turn and I have ends and Ultra Balls. So we're trying to figure out, I don't need this Vault Stone anymore. I could stand in and retreat. Uh, I could take a knockout on the Zorak Break, which is interesting. And I know that, uh, you know, Cena's recovery card is gone. So I could just Lysander up the Zorak Break, take a knockout on that, leaving this Zorak here. I'm also considering a win condition with Oracorio. That's kind of in the back of my mind. I could leave this Zorak here with only 30 HP remaining, and I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 8 Pokemon in the discard pile. So if I take a knockout on this Zorak break over there, and then maybe I soften up this Zorak, then I come in with Oracorio, and I use Revelation Dance for my final two prizes. This is like a serious win condition that's kind of uh, crossing my mind right now. But it is an option for me. And I think maybe taking out that Zorark break is going to be better since if I take out the Zorark break this turn, then if Cena does not evolve any of these two Zoraks into Zorark break, then I am going to be able to take a knockout on this Zorark, the 70 damage one, next turn. And the reason why I have to knock out this one first is because if I don't knock out this one first and I knock out the Zorark with only the 30 HP remaining, then Cena brings up the Zorark break with 70 HP remaining. And with this board state, I'm not able to knock it out. So I have to take a knockout on the Zorark break while I have that knockout. Hope that Cena cannot evolve this active Zorak into a Zorak break and keep me from, uh, you know, from taking the game here. So Cena's going to end us both to two. And it's two to two prizes. Our board states are pretty similar. And he's going to mind jack me for just 50 damage. Now I have Verse Seeker and Double Colorless Energy. And I'm feeling okay. I think I've been able to wrangle this game back in. I can take a knockout on this active Zorark, leaving Cena with just one Zorark left and myself with only one prize left to take. So I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to utilize this first Seeker in my hand. I would like to get an energy drop onto a Pokemon. I can't teammates this turn because Cena did not take a knockout. Uh, I would like to see how many versus Seekers maybe I have remaining. I have three versus seekers in deck so i have plenty of versus seekers left in deck plenty of options to do that and let's take a look am i going to end again that seems pretty brutal i think i am just going to sycamore this hand i think i have plenty of resources left in the deck if i just sycamore and i can get an attachment onto a pokemon that would be very strong i have two dce left in deck so i decided to just let this hand rip and i find a double colorless i could put the double colorless onto a tapu lele gx which is really interesting. And by putting the Tapu Lele GX down, the Tapu Lele with the double colorless on it is actually not a bad play at all since it is going to be one of the few Pokemon that can actually one-hit KO uh, Cena's final Zorark here at the end of the game, assuming that he does not have a great retort to my Tapu Lele GX. So Tapu Lele is looking like going to be the Pokemon of choice. I would prefer to Drampa since Drampa can one-hit KO anything on Cena's board with two energy drops on it, but the Tapu Lele GX in a pinch will work. Uh, I have no supporters left in the deck, but that's okay. Tapu Lele or Drampa, either of them getting an energy onto them was going to be very strong this turn and gives me an option to be able to finish up the game here. And I think I should drop the DCE onto the Tapu Lele, or actually I'm just going to take the knockout with Tapu Lele this turn. That's crazy. Uh, I could have mind jacked for knockouts, uh, but going in with the Tapu Lele, I'm preserving these Zoroarks and potentially will take a hit 
from Cena's Zorark here and then maybe try to stand in and limit and uh, and then maybe put the Tapu Lele. So I'm really uh, kind of going for it here. And potentially I know in Cena's discard pile, you know, how many options he's got left for this game. He finds a Drampa, gets a Darkness Energy onto it, plays Hex Maniac, and that Drampa drop is actually uh, the thing that ended up losing him the game here. So Cena actually misplaying by putting that Drampa down gives me win with just Lysander. All I need is Verse Seeker or Lysander. If he had taken a look at my discard pile and seen that I have plenty of Lysanders left in the deck, uh, I think that Cena would have been better off not benching that Drampa at all. But all I have to do is retreat into my Zorark break, and I have got Mine Jack, or not Mine Jack, Foul Play, Copy Berserk, 180 damage, and we take the win in a really stressful game two. Absolutely crazy. I'm really excited about that game two after winning that one. I felt like I really had some opportunities to outplay Cena in that game. I really used my knowledge of the Zorark mirror to my advantage and set up my board position to be able to capitalize and take the win. Moving into game three, we've got a little bit of a rough opening hand here with a Professor Sycamore. I have to discard a bunch of resources and I open with Oracorio, but I have to do it. We just Sycamore here into an absolutely horrible hand. So after, you know, getting that wind in my sails after game two, we just Sycamore into an unplayable hand here in uh, the finals in game three. And I have learned that in this Zorak mirror match, you cannot... Uh, waste any time. I mean, you have to set up aggressively. You have to set up quick. You have to take quick knockouts. So I'm going to go for the Revelation Dance attack here, putting some damage onto this Tapu Lele GX and just hoping that maybe Cena ends me this next turn. I mean, certainly could end me here uh, to a new hand or maybe I just top deck a Versus Seeker, top deck and end. If I top deck anything, Ultra Ball, you know, whatever, uh, you know, we could get going pretty quickly. Sure enough, Cena's just going to Lysander Mazurua and knock that out. So I'm left with just Oracorio, top deck Azurua. Horrible situation for me to be in here. I've got the Turtonator GX not doing anything uh, for me currently. And I'm really devastated that this is the culmination of the 2017 tournament after an epic comeback in game two. Uh, Cena setting up quicker than me in game one, just getting his field flooded with Zorak breaks. Game two, uh, playing my way to victory there, setting up my bench smaller and really managing my resources uh, very well, I felt like. And then in game three, just drawing, you know, into a horrible hand like this after all of the games that I played through to get to this point. And Cena is just going to Sycamore through his deck. And I am sitting here looking at Turtonator, Zork, and a Darkness Energy with my poor Oracorio in the active, just not where you want it to be. Uh, at a time like this very unfortunate circumstances there's still time i feel like to be able to draw this i have 120 damage dealt on this tapu lele gx if i draw a sycamore right here yeah it's floodstone uh if i drew a sycamore evolve into zork take a knockout on the tapu lele gx set up my board we could have a shot in this game but unfortunately that's not what happened we got floatstone turtonator darkness energy who knows where the rest of my good cards are? They are not in this hand. We've got Floatstone. I can retreat the Zorak into Turtonator to try and buy more time. But at this point, the momentum is everything. A mirror match is just such a tight game. I mean, since we're utilizing the same strategies against each other, it really, uh, you know, there's not really enough room to be able to outplay your opponent if you're drawing cards like this, unfortunately. So... Uh, there's not much more I could do. I felt like the deck list that I brought to this event was really straightforward, very consistent, carried me this far, but thus is the Pokemon trading card game. Sometimes uh, you just don't draw the cards that you need on the turns that you need them. And uh, from what you can see, Cena is about to just take it all the way to the bank. He's got uh, Drampa is setting up on the bench. Kakui dealing even more damage to my active Turtonator. We find a double colorless energy. I could stand in, take a knockout with uh, my Zorark if I want to, which feels really bad. But at this point, it's really just delaying the inevitable. I mean, I can Shell Trap with Turtonator, which maybe feels slightly you know, okay, but not really. I mean, I need to take these prizes and hope that I just draw out of it. But at this point, 
Uh, I think it's too little, too late. And even off of the prizes, we got oh, we do a sycamore, which is pretty good. So uh, I could potentially sycamore this next turn, but you know, it's uh, it's gonna be pretty sad because Cena's got three Zeruis. He's about to evolve up into Zorix. Drampa GX in the active position as well, and uh, and I've got a heavily damaged Turtonator GX. So it feels like it's delaying the inevitable. I know at this point, because of that rough start, you just cannot afford any rough starts like that in a mirror match when we're utilizing these uh, these same Pokemon, these same strategies. It's just gonna be a matter of, uh, you know, who is set up faster and drew better in the end. So. Cena is certainly capitalizing on this early momentum that he has in this game. Berserk knocking out my only Zorark. And then I've got to use Professor Sycamore with, uh, you know, just Turtonator active, a heavily damaged Turtonator GX. There's, there's nothing we could do. I mean, I can teammate for some Zeruas potentially, but at this point, there's no stopping him. It's just not possible i could teammates for maybe a double colorless energy to shell trap hope that you know cena heavily damages his own drampa then i go in with something else maybe a zora can take a knockout the following turn and hope that cena doesn't have a way to respond but i would need him to like bite into the shell trap it's just it's it's really really bad now i have taken two prizes i mean i i have something but it's it's not good at all uh and i'm sitting here kind of mulling it over feeling bad we fought a long way to get to this point you know undefeated in swiss and uh you know really solid series leading to this one really you know powerful two games uh to get to this game three and just have the deck fall apart on you in uh in game three of the finals of the tournament always feels kind of bad but that is uh that is the pokemon trading card game unfortunately uh, but I, I love it. I mean, randomness is part of the game and, uh, you know, sometimes your hands don't necessarily agree with you, but, uh, Cena's deck is setting up so well and not giving me any breathing room. If I had had a little bit more breathing room somewhere along the way, uh, in order to maybe have some sort of flexibility with a slower setup, we would be okay. But Cena's deck is just firing on all six cylinders right now. And he is, uh, he is really capitalizing on my lack of momentum here at the start. So it looks like I'm probably going to play this Versus Seeker and just go for teammates. I think I kind of have to in order to guarantee myself two cards better than just researching or using Professor Sycamore and hoping that I draw some cards that I want to see. I think I'd rather guarantee two and then Sycamore the following turn to hopefully get uh, some other ones. But at this point, I'm really just I'm trying to you know, solve the Rubik's Cube. I'm really trying to piece it together. Is there any sort of route that I'm not considering that maybe I could take in order to give myself an advantage? Probably not, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to consider it anyways because uh, we do have unlimited time in this friendly match in order to compete. So I'm going to take full advantage of that to make sure that I, uh, you know, I'm not missing any potential route I could have here when I'm almost down and out. And uh, Cena being a good sport, waiting patiently while I really mull this decision over. You know, I don't have anything great to do, but, uh, you know, I'm going to try uh, my hardest anyway. Uh, maybe I'm looking at Tapu Lele GX. I think, you know, I'm not exactly sure why I've decided the Tapu Lele GX is the answer, but uh, I've got the Tapu Lele, and I can Wonder Tag for something else. I think I, I need to Wonder Tag for an N, right? is what I need to do. Yes. So that that's the play. And I think that makes sense. I want to guarantee myself an end because I'm going to shell trap and then I'm going to hope that Cena takes the bait. This is my route. And I actually like this route. Uh, I'm going to hope that Cena takes it, that Cena knocks out my Turtonator GX, and that I can end Cena to one, find a double colorless off my end, and one, you know, I could use energy drive to knock out the Drampa. That's, that's the hope. I mean, is it going to happen? No, uh, but uh, that's that's the hope anyways, is that, you know, he swings into my Turtonator and then I have a way to potentially shake and bake N to low and finish the game that way. Uh, so we're certainly going to try. We see Cena putting a Darkness Energy onto his own Tapu Lele GX, and this is actually just going to end me, which is fine. I mean, my hand was you know, pretty 
terrible, so I don't necessarily mind that. However, I don't have an end in my discard pile, so this handful of Versa Seekers is not really doing anything for me, uh, which is a little bit sad. And now Cena gets to foul play with the Zorak Break, and will eat that uh, damage from the Shell Trap onto his Zorak Break, but doesn't really care because he's got game set up with Drampa GX on his bench, which is not good for me. So he's only got one prize remaining to my four. I could potentially knock out this Zorak Break if I find myself a double colorless energy, but like I said, I leave myself susceptible to being return KO'd by that Drampa GX, and I don't have a solution to the Drampa GX. There's nothing in my arsenal that can fix the fact that Cena has that Drampa GX on his bench with three energy on it, capable of berserking for 150 damage, 180 with a choice band, knocking out anything on my board. So I'm gonna sit here with the Versus Seeker and I'm gonna see if there's anything I could potentially do, rack my brain uh, around to get around that Drampa GX. But really, I do not think that there is um, anything I can possibly do at this point. I've got teammates available to me. I've got Lysander available to me. Uh, and I've got to play one of these versus Seekers. So uh, I really don't want to go down like this. It feels very bad. Uh, but uh, but we got to play on. And that's just that's just the situation that we're in. So we're going to Versus Seeker. And I think teammates is probably what I have to do. But I'm not sure that there's two cards that can save me here out of my deck. Uh, I've got the Zerua. I mean, eventually we could evolve that up into a Zorak, but I would need time. I need turns uh, in order to do that. Now, if I don't knock out the active Zorak break, I do potentially make it so that Cena cannot retreat the Zorak break. He would have to copy Energy Drive, which wouldn't be doing a ton of damage to my Tapu Lele GX. So I could potentially do a play where I don't knock out uh, the Zorak break and try to set up my own Drampa. And then if I set up my own Drampa, and eventually can bring up his Drampa and knock that out. But then he could copy, yeah, it's just a checkmate situation because then he could foul play copy my Drampa with his Zorak break. So really, I need to set up my own Zorak break. That's the only way potentially out of this is if I set up multiple Zorak breaks uh, right now. And if I set up multiple Zorak breaks, I can gust up his Drampa GX and berserk that for knockout with my Zorak break and then potentially have a small enough board position to where I cannot be KO'd by his own field of various Zoraks. It's, it's not good, but that probably is my only route. Looks like I'm looking at Drampa GX here. Drampa GX is a little bit of a trap because if I go for the Drampa GX, like I said, Zorak break can knock it out and that Drampa could knock it out. So there's just not really any good way to go, but you know, I'm certainly trying to find it if I can find it. I'm thinking maybe, uh, you know, if I use Drampa GX, maybe I can remove an energy from his Drampa, something like that. I could use Rescue Stretcher, get myself uh, another Zerua onto the bench potentially. But at this point, uh, or instruct a Rangaroo potentially, uh, maybe just to draw some more cards. Maybe I'm going to get the Zorak back so I can evolve it next turn. I know that eventually I would need to get a Zorak break into play. So I could put the Drampa down, I could put the Zerua down, and uh, just hope that maybe Cena does not have an energy to retreat his active Zorak break. Either way, uh, it's basically checkmate. So I'm really just mulling it over here, trying to make sure that I'm not misstepping at all. And then I just have to pass with my Tapu Lele in the active. But I'm pretty sure Cena's got the energy he needs to retreat his active Zorak break. Uh, it's gonna Lysander out my Drampa, and actually doesn't need the energy to retreat. He's got it with the Mind Jack, uh, not the Mind Jack, the Foul Play, Copy Berserk, four knockout on my Drampa, and that's the finals. And that's it for the 2017 North American International Championship Retro Format Tournament. Great games to Cena, Gazi Askar there in the finals. Zorark Break Mirror doesn't get much more exciting than that. Unfortunately, our deck kind of fell apart in our hands there in game three, but we had some really exciting games getting to this point, and I cannot stress enough how much I love the 2017 Pokemon trading card game format. It is so fun to play. Hopefully, you got to enjoy some of those really intense games, back and forth moments, and uh, they were just, they were priceless. I really loved this format, and I loved playing in this tournament, so big shout out again to Pokestats for hosting a smooth event. It was a lot of fun to participate in. If you're looking for cards yourself, make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all your trading card game singles. If you're looking for PTCGO codes, make sure to 
check out fullgripcodes.com for instant PTCGO code delivery. If this is your first game catching in the 2017 retro format series, make sure to check out the description below. I will have a playlist posted of all of my rounds leading up until this point. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, check me out on Twitch. I'll catch you all later. Peace.